All right, guys, so Raid is scaling. They're doing something that I thought they were going to start doing a long, long time ago, but they haven't. Whether you're a whale, free to play, this is some popcorn material. So let's get right into it. What up team, it's your boy Midorink here and today we're talking about the event going on. We are talking about the Champion Chase Tournament where they took a newly released champion, one that probably analytically scored very well across the marketing department. They had a 10 times event, I know they killed it for that. They were cheeky, they inserted this champion into a bunch of other champions for the 10 times event, lowering the chances of people pulling him and now he is the reward for high levels in this current champion chase tournament and the points are so high people are spending so much money and my thing is i mean listen we have theodore the savant here we all know how good he is he makes farming faster and people are going crazy for this champion who either didn't go for him in the 10 times were unsuccessful in the 10 times event but just to give you like the scale of things we have a day and 13 hours left and people are putting up ridiculous amounts of points trying to get this champion here so i mean just looking at the top 25 i do recognize a lot of names here i'm sure you guys do as well so i'm curious in the comments how many of these guys are in your guys brackets just let me know if you see a name here, you recognize it, go in the comments, say, you know, number four, number five, number six. He's number one in my bracket, because I'm really curious to see, based on this video, where they end up at the end of this tournament here. Now, this is the thing. They have to be careful with this. Like I said, this is a really good idea, and Plarium is going to make so much money going from a 10x event with Teodar already inside of this to now this huge champion chase tournament. So they're making a lot of money but the losers, they might quit. I'm just saying, these are a lot of points here. I mean, just in case you're curious, you get points based on pulling a certain quality of champion here. So it's not the bad one where it's like X amount of points per Sacred Shard, that would have been stupid, but these guys are pulling like crazy to get that bonus legendary. I guess you can consider it a bonus event, but it's a very shaky, shaky bonus event for sure here. So one thing I wanna talk about, and I don't know, don't get mad at me. So if you're free to play, you're probably laughing at this, sitting back with popcorn saying, I wonder how much these guys are actually going to spend, right? Is someone gonna stop here? Is the number two in my personal bracket going to shoot up to number one? Is he going to overtake it last minute? These things are kind of exciting to watch, right? But what could they do to reward everybody? Yes, we have this right row here. Not a lot of people are getting it. So if you look at the right row, 5,500, that's currently 10th place, okay? And these brackets are, I believe, 200 players. Yeah, so the majority of people, they're not going to see the top rewards here. And they're very good here. So what I was going to propose is this. Let me know if you hate this idea. I didn't think about it for too long. It came up probably five minutes before I hit the record button. So each 200 person bracket or any bracket here is going to have kind of like what we see on the right here, but it's going to be total points across every single player. So it's going to benefit you as a free to play player, low spender, whatever. You ran out of shards for this. You're skipping this event, whatever. You're still going to get stuff if you have whales in your team. So let's say 100,000 points, 200,000 points, 300,000 points, or they go 150, 200, 250, just whatever scale like that, and everyone gets rewards. But one thing to kind of drive up the competition is there's going to be a record bar, the highest any group has ever achieved. There's going to be a like a nameplate record saying this group achieved this, this is the highest. If you pass it, maybe you get a bonus reward. Maybe everyone gets a special avatar. That would be kind of cool, but it is what it is. So I think that was a really interesting idea. That way, it sucks if you have a whale in your group and you were trying to get whatever the top champion is or whatever the top 10 rewards are for your bracket. But if you have a lot of whales, it could benefit you, right? It could, really could benefit you a lot because 
you're now getting these milestone rewards. That's kind of a good way to think of it. Milestone rewards like we have in clan versus clan, but for these giant champion chase tournaments. So maybe something for Playroom to consider. There's really no downside besides it incentivizes people to spend more and everyone gets a piece of the pie if your group does really, really well. So I want to know what you guys think about that idea. And like I said, we have ridiculous amounts. I mean, I don't know if I want to start calculating how many. OK, so we have let's just round this up to 150,000 points, right? And based on the info, you get 500 per legendary. Now, of course, the top player with 150,000 points didn't pull all legendaries, but just try to fathom that for one second. 150,000 points and we have a day, I believe a day and a half. Yeah, a day and a half left, depending on what bracket you're in, because I don't think all groups are going to end at the same time. So that's a lot of points. I don't know what that guy's group looks like. Usually, based on the history of these tournaments, most of the players in the top are in similar groups because there is no reason to be at 147,131 points if you're Ziggy, if someone's not breathing down your neck. Now, this is where it gets kind of ruthless. So I kind of, I'm using this because this is my bracket as an example here. IPR frog dot dot dot, whatever the rest of his name is. He's not out of this. Hollow one, he's a he's kind of far behind. He's probably out of this, but if he was at like 30,000 points, he wouldn't be out of this. What a lot of players do is they do mind games, right? So the top guy is kind of setting the bar. So if you're number two, you're number three, you have all of the power in your hands. You can start planning. He doesn't know what you have stored. You can put up 100,000 points in, I don't know, four hours, just pulling shards nonstop, feeding champions nonstop. We've seen it happen before. Think back to Sir Nicholas, the event. It wasn't for pulling shards, but it was for leveling up champions. Think of how mad the players are that had the number two or the number three guy shoot up in the last hour 45 minutes to take it away and the people who were on top they just got the most expensive jingle hunter ever like what a t i mean look this second place reward is not as bad as a jingle hunter by any means but it's still pretty bad right four six star epic relentless pieces i mean number one's teodar the savant right so like I said, I think they're going to gauge how this does on a marketing scale. And I think it's pretty clear how well it's doing. And I think they're going to start doing this more and more often. But the second place, the third place players, maybe they won't quit. Maybe I'm being dramatic. And I mean, I know people who did quit over that Sir Nicholas thing who got beat and they were just like, I'm done. This is stupid. I can't believe I lost. It is what it is. You know what you're signing up for when you do get into these things. But I'm curious to see what kind of effect this is going to have on everyone who doesn't win i mean they're probably pulling tons of legendaries if you come to think about it maybe some of the people pulling tons of shards maybe they're just pulling this guy right how bad would it be if the guy with 147,000 points and he's trying to get first place i mean i guess you okay so maybe that's not duplicates exist you can empower champions maybe that's not the best example here but once again this guy isn't an arena champion so the only competitive endgame thing in this game, it's not Hydra, it's not speedrunning dungeons, it's not breaking world records for dungeons. Yeah, it's kind of cool, but no one really cares, right? It has to do with how much you spend, how much gear you have, and there is some intellect and knowledge that is involved with that. Most of the people that created the fastest teams in this game are very smart and have a lot of knowledge, but it's just not the end game. The only skill based end game by a large margin is going to be Platinum Arena. Now, I'm curious to see what would this look like if the new champion was game changing and meta changing for Platinum Arena? Would the numbers be higher? It's possible. Because, like I said, Theodore the Savant, he makes Dragon faster. Ice Golem faster, kind of irrelevant dungeons if you're in the end game. If you're end game, you're not really farming dungeons at all because the forge is so overpowered. But if you are, you're probably buying gear packs. They have a much higher yield based on buying energy and farming, but you're kind of farming Fire Knight, right? So with all that being said, 
Now you're kind of going hard for this glorified champion that's really good in Spider. Maybe he's going to help out for competitive clan versus clan, which is not a thing. Hasn't been since the first day. It's been an ego fest ever since it came out, but that it is what it is for that. So like, that's kind of my point here. So you can farm dragon in, I don't know, 20, 30 seconds with this guy, or you can do it in 40 to 50 seconds without him. Is it really worth this many points? To some people, probably. To others, definitely not. So I kind of wanted to make this video because I think it's fun. I think it's exciting. I haven't seen them do this before. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong here. I don't recall another champion getting hit with a 10 times event and being the reward from a champion chase tournament. Definitely fact check me on that because I have not looked. But I think my memory is kind of decent on this game. I could have overlooked someone. But even now, thinking about it briefly, I, I can't think of another champion they did this for. Is this the new future of champions that prove to be very marketable in Raid Shadow Legends? Is this the new future of what we can expect? That means hoarding shards, if you are a spender, it's going to have a new meaning. This is another way to keep whales actively buying, actively spending. If they can look forward to tournaments like this, it's going to make... The entertainment value for everyone a lot higher because like I said it's kind of interesting when it gets down to those last two three hours to see who's gonna get sniped who's gonna pull the champion and say I can see it I'm out and it's just gonna stir up some drama for sure for players who get second place they're gonna go on tantrums there's no way around it it is what it is I would be pretty upset too if I went pedal to the metal and got second place or third place that would be really bad I mean, even spending 50,000 points and getting second, I wouldn't be a fan of that. I mean, 18 is kind of a lot, too. I'm at 2,000. Not that I pulled a lot, but okay. So I'm not, I'm going to stop ranting here. I thought those were some pretty cool ideas for sure. And I'm excited to see what happens next. So don't forget to leave a comment. If you know any of the top players that are in your brackets, let me know. I'm interested. And if you enjoy this content, smash that like button, subscribe, turn on the notification bell, and I will see you all in my next upload.